Hey everybody, welcome to A Medic's Mind, the podcast. Now, I know, you may be asking yourselves, Matt, uh, do you have a cold? You sound uh, different. And the answer is... No, actually, I feel fine. Yeah, I feel good. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is a nice little interlude to what this episode is about. But it's, set, it's September, guys, and it's actually... Uh, well into the first week of September now, we're actually encroaching into the second week of September, which means we're actually getting closer to the midway point of September, which means we're very close to October. So let's just call it two weeks away from October. <laughs> so aside from my glaring shortcomings in mathematics, um, I am obviously a very excitable person when it comes to the thoughts of fall and Halloween and things like that. And that motivated me to uh, write a story for you. And so I wrote a story. It's called Jack of the lantern now that may be a weird way of saying jack-o-lantern but i did some research about the origins of why we carve pumpkins and uh and it got me to thinking after i read all these kind of articles and and stories and short stories and as well as ordering a book about jack of the lantern um it got me to thinking about writing my own story about uh this enigmatic figure and uh and that's exactly what i did so i wrote this halloween story to kind of get us in the mood to prepare us and get us excited about the upcoming october um and the halloween festivities so uh, i'm gonna play it for you now it's called jack of the lantern i wrote this i narrated it i hope that you enjoy it and uh, i hope that you are as excited as i am for halloween because like I said, you know, it's it's coming up soon. It's not soon enough, but it's coming up soon. And we are uh, getting into the fall, cool, crisp weather where I can start wearing hoodies again and sweaters. And I'm excited about that. So without further ado, this is Jack of the Lantern. I believe this is episode 217. Let me take a look. I think so. Anyway, give me a second. Uh, what are we at? Uh, 250, 216. This is episode 216 of the Amenix Mind podcast. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoy it. Be well, be safe, and above all else, stay excited for Halloween, but also keep talking to each other. This is an incoming transmission from the Emetics Mind podcast. Stay tuned for an incoming episode. was a year much earlier than I'd care to recollect. The sky was black and rough with cloud. Off in the far distant heavens, if there is such a thing, a crawling thunder befell the world. For a peasant such as myself, being damp, cold and peckish beneath inclement weather was commonplace. This didn't make it any less miserable. The only respite came in the form of ale from the pub just yonder from my patchwork abode. I navigated the cold, damp earth by foot most nights. The pathway was well tessellated by craggy wagon tracks that tore into the flesh of the ground itself. The three days' rain and its continuance made this trek an even more arduous one, as did the darkness of it all. The wind blew mercilessly, carrying with it a surreptitious whisper of an impending winter. My bones rattled beneath my garb. The sloshing of churning mud beneath my footfalls acted as mockery of my predicament. So my pace quickened with perturb. After some time, and a complete saturation of my shoes, the dim lanterns that stood guard out front of the alehouse came into view. Finally, reprieve at last. At this point in the tale, I'm sure you have gathered that I'm a man fond of the drink. I shall not dispute. I should, however, be more polite, dare I say, hospitable, and introduce myself. My name is Jack. I have a last name, but no one uses it, so why bother? I am a simple man, not hard to please. A frothy mug of ale should do just fine. 
It is, however, during circumstances where I find myself yearning for said beverage that I often find myself in times of quarrel. I mean, how is it that I am supposed to know that should a barkeep continue to pour and refill my cup at my behest, that when the tally comes to, I am to pay for them all? I assumed he was just being nice. And this is how I obtained the moniker of Stingy Jack. Can't say as I'm all too fond of it, but I acquiesce in that rebuke would be nugatory. I entered in through the modest wooden door, feeling a sudden embrace of warmth welcome me inside. The warmth I speak of is merely ambient. The scanty few that littered this establishment were less neighborly. Sat at the bar, elbows propping his tired frame. Jeremiah. A sap of a man that worked laboriously for laughable pittance. A family man, but a sap nonetheless. And to my right, Old Man Fletcher. A seafaring man in his younger time. Now just a man adorned by a grey who sat lonesome at his corner table. He would often fall asleep, leaving his coin purse accessible to a keen eye. An eye of which I had two of. When he would wake and stare puzzled at his dwindled currency, I would inform him that he drank more than he'd likely remember. He either believed me, or was too old and fatigued to rebut. And this was how I solved my barkeep problem. You see, I'm something of a clever fellow. Though others around town may differ, I stand firm on the assertion. Ephraim, a nail, please. I said through a smile, removing my hat and shaking the dampness to the floor. Through scrutinous brown eyes, he began to pour with reluctance. My smile grew. Now it is here that I'll admit... My teeth are sparse, a consequence of peasant life. But I was no less captivating, I assure you. I sat down at a table of my own and began to sip gleefully from the mug bestowed to me. During one such sip, a cool breeze invaded the pub. First, slithering along the uneven floorboards, and then scaling the table legs upward. It was impossible not to shiver. Though it was short-lived, it was stark. So much so that each and every patron gawked toward the door from where it came. Even the sleepy Fletcher peered toward the entryway. Stood there was a tall figure. Well-proportioned and stoic. A government man, I reckoned. His shoulders were broad and his stature near perfection. He boasted a long, expensive black cloak. His eyes almost matched his darkened attire. When he walked further into the pub, each step sounded ominously alike to the thunder bleeding from the sky above. I will say, I began to grow uneasy as this figure appeared to be walking with purpose directly toward my table. And before long, he had arrived. He stood over me, saying not a word. The cold from outside wafted from his clothes. I closed myself off by crossing my arms and sitting straighter in my chair. Hello, Jack. His voice growled like a subtle roar. You know my name. How do you... Yes, I know who you are, Jack. At this revelation, he slid the chair opposite mine and sat down, welcoming himself to my solitude. Well, stranger, I, I don't know you. I am Luke. More appropriately... Lucifer. But you, Jack, may call me the Devil. I had no reason to question him. The sinew of my body knew it to be true. He really was who he claimed to be. I see. And, uh, what is it I may do for you? I asked, masking my hesitancy and trepidation with inflated hubris. You may finish your drink. I'd ask that you enjoy it, for when it is done, you are to come with me. Oh, and and where, pray tell, is it that we are to go? He laughed, slightly before responding. (laughs) Jack, you know where we're going. And I did. Without clearer direction, I already knew. 
The devil had come to take me to hell. What? Hell? <laughs> For what? A life of petty pickpocketing? Simple larceny? Devil, you already know I did those things to live a life otherwise not available to me. There was a pause, and further stoicism from the man in black. No, Jack. Damnation is not for corporeal crimes. Slightly confused, my brow now fractured the skin of my forehead. If not for the life I've lived, then why? Why are you here? Why me? The devil now held firm with his gaze. Your soul, Jack. Your soul is tarnished. Heaven will not permit you. And this world is in no further need of you. So you are to come with me. At the end of his pontification, his eyes lowered to my mug. My empty mug. Time to go, Jack. So it is. The devil shifted in his chair. I believe he expected that I would as well. And I would, eventually. Uh, devil? Yes, Jack. I seem to have outdrank the means of which I have to compensate the poor barkeep. As a final penance to this world, could you perhaps craft some coin so that I may pay the man? Without much contestation, the devil did as I asked, and when he outstretched his hand to mine, I grabbed the coin and placed a small Christian cross in the palm of his. His typical stoic demeanor soured some. What's wrong, devil? Are you unable to move? Shame. It was now that I smirked and laughed just a little. I could help you. Uh, what was it, Luke? I could remove the cross, take it right out of your hand, free you from this immovable state. Would you like that? The devil, unable to orate, simply nodded with his ebonized eyes. Very well. Oh, but before I do... I need you to promise. Promise that I may live another year. One more year on this sullen world of mine. Allow me a full calendar year to enjoy that which I enjoy most. And come this time, this day next year, you may come and take me away. With little else to bargain with, the devil agreed to my terms. I removed the cross and he confirmed our arrangement. I also kept the money. And that is exactly what would happen. A year would pass, and on a chilled night, much like the one from a year prior, the devil returned. Only this time I was not in the pub. I was sloshed, leaning against an arthritic crimson maple. The day's come, Jack. I have allowed you one year. With intoxicant flowing freely through my veins, I responded with playful retort. Oh, how you have, fair devil. A man, sorry, a demon of your word you are. I bowed exaggeratingly in acknowledgement. The thing is, Luke, if I may address you as such, you seemingly have stumbled into a virtual jail, as it were. It was at this notification that the devil scanned the ground around him. You see, I was not in the pub and choosing to brave the elements for a very specific reason. I knew the year was up, so I planned to meet the devil in a darkened field, replete with tall grass, shadowed fields, and this sprawling maple here. And around it, I had meticulously placed, at even intervals, a perfect encircling swath of Christian crosses. Crosses that the devil now found himself standing within. A prison, indeed. Jack, enough of this! You are to come with me to hell immediately. Enough games. The devil snarled. Well, now, devil, I'd love to. I, I would I would love to. But the thing is, I'm not ready to die just yet. So I'll make you a deal. I'll free you, 
I'll remove these pesky crosses. <laughs> but when I do, you give me an oath that you will never return and you will never allow me to step one foot in hell. My smile was as wide as it's ever been. I mean, what choice did the Sultan of Darkness have? And to my glee, he agreed. He gave me his word. And with that, I removed the crosses and watched the witless devil ride away. You see, people call me stingy, whereas they should refer to me as Devilish Jack, the man who outsmarted the devil himself. I even found a way to light the path from my humble shanty to the pub, meaning I could avoid the bothersome puddles along the way. I procured, by way of five fingers, a turnip from Lady Adelaide's garden. I dried it out and carved some holes into it, slits that almost looked like a face. I never claimed to be an artist, but it worked. The path was lit, and my life was safe, and I lived happily ever after. Well, until I didn't. Seems my fondness for the drink was not without consequence. You see, one night after enjoying the barley, I was asked to pay. And upon reaching into my pockets, the linen that lined them was deemed as insufficient currency. I was thrown from the bar, landing with punitive force, smacking my head against one of the lanterns out front. Unbeknown to me, this would be a fatal wound. For when I went to bed that night, I never woke again. Dead. Just like that. Stingy Jack was gone from this world. So, to my surprise, I began to ascend. A beautiful, welcoming hallway of light beckoned to me. And with little to barter with, I obliged. However, things would not go as I had assumed. I was halted by a figure with no face. No words were spoken, yet... I understood perfectly what was happening. I was not destined for heaven at all, so I have never seen it. Hence my incredulity at the beginning. And with my dismissal, I was sent a little further south. A lot further, actually. And upon reaching the fiery crusts of hell, I began to accept my eternal damnation. I smiled at a headless figure to my left, nodded to a half-human, half-horse creature to my right, as I traipsed closer to what felt like an entrance. And just as I was about to pull on the scorching knob, I was halted. A familiar baritone called to me. Hello, Jack. Hello, devil. Surprise! I'm home. And to my surprise, the devil returned with a smile of his own. Though he hadn't ever outwitted me, he appeared to take satisfaction in my present state. <laughs> Jack, you don't have a home. The devil admonished gleefully. But I'm here, and heaven won't allow me in, so... Yes, Jack, I am aware. And I, as you say, am a demon of my word. And I promised to never allow you in hell, remember? Not one foot. The night by the tree began to flicker into memory. I really had made him promise. And so where was I to go? What was I to do? Jack, since you loved your life of apathetic leisure so rapturously, I will allow you to return. Sparked by an unbelieving hope, I began to thank the devil with great repetition. Yes, Jack. You may return but once a year. And you may do so as the face of a turnip. The face of a turnip? What do you mean? Yes, the face of a turnip. A pumpkin, whatever they wish, really. You indeed did outwit me, Jack. And then you stole from Lady Adelaide. Then desecrated the vegetable into a twisted lantern for your own selfish good. And this gave birth to an idea. 
You may have loathed the world, but loved to drink. You stole, cheated and cussed. You enjoyed trickery and tomfoolery. All the while boasting that crooked smile of yours. As such, your penance will be an immortal life to be lived but once a year. People all around the world will carve faces into vegetables big and small. And then you, Jack, will sit outside their door, thwarting ne'er-do-wells, just as you thwarted me. And it was at the culmination of the devil's hearty exclamation that I faltered in acceptance and realization of my fate. I was doomed to reside within the obtuse realm of limbo for an eternity as a form of penance. And that is how I became what I am now, a man named Jack. Or as you may know me, Jack of the Lantern. Or rather, Jack-o'-lantern. And that is why you carve pumpkins through to this day. So that I may sit outside your door, tricking evil spirits away, only to be smashed violently in what I see as a symbolism of irony at how I came to be in the first place. A man named Jack, hitting his head on a lantern causing death, only to live forever as Jack of the Lantern. Happy Halloween to you all. Thank you.